Hello there. Welcome to the CNBC Africa special. My name is Julius Bismungu, and today we're speaking to Masai Ujili, the president of Toronto Raptors and co-founder of Giants of Africa. Masai, thank you for making time to speak to CNBC Africa. Thank you. Today, uh, this year marks 20 years since you co-founded Giants of Africa as a platform to empower young people through basketball. When you look at 20 years uh, down the road, what are you most proud of and what are you celebrating? Um, you know, while we're here, we're celebrating the youth. You know, I'm, I'm, um, we're so proud uh, of where we've come uh, the last 20 years. And, but the big thing is to look at the, um, the next 20 years. I think um, Giants of Africa are evolving from um, youth camps, youth clinics, up to uh, developing um, basketball for girls and boys, uh, the life skills that we teach in camps, um, uh, the court builds, building courts all around the, co uh, the continent and the commitment to build a hundred courts around the continent. Um, it's, there's, there's, been, there's been so much um, that um, Giants of Africa has built and um, we hope, hopefully we look at the next 20 years and hopefully we grow um, and um, continue to help the youth of the continent. Uh, I mean, part of the, the celebration, uh, you know, the activities we're seeing uh, this week and the week uh, before uh, is the groundbreaking of Zaria Accord, which is, you know, a project uh, that is going to comprise of, you know, sports, entertainment, uh, but also accommodation facilities. Take us through your, your thought process when you, come, when you came up with this project. Uh, well, I think it boils down to infrastructure in the continent. Um, well, we've struggled with infrastructure, and I think we have a lot of talent in this, in the, in this continent. Um, Africa's biggest jewel is, is, is the talent of its people. And, um, but we lack infrastructure. Um, we talk about um, arenas, we talk about basketball courts, we talk about sports facilities, we talk about even entertainment facilities and it all comes uh, together when uh, we don't have uh, these facilities or these infrastructures to actually have programming. A lot of these companies want to have, do programming on, uh, on courts or uh, they talk about sponsorship and uh, but we don't have the infrastructure to hold all of these events, you know, and monetize. Uh, and we have to start thinking that way. So uh, when we started thinking about Zaria, um, the president had an inc uh, President Kagame had uh, an incredible vision uh, of building an arena, and uh, there's the stadium, uh, and then what's the ecosystem that's built around there? So when people go to the arenas, they eat, they drink. They enjoy, they have entertain, there's entertainment. When they are done, you know, like what's the flow of a place like around there uh, where um, they can do other things. Uh, so um, Zaria Court is, um, includes a hotel, sports bar, shops, um, places where people can actually like uh, entertain themselves and uh, feel lifestyle uh, and feel African lifestyle. And that's um, what we want to do uh, with Zaria Court. I think it's fair to say that this speaks to the kind of business mindset that you have and all these takes, you know, some finance to, to be able to pull it through. Uh, how much are you investing in this project and, you know, how are you looking to recoup your investment at the end of the day? Um, you know, lots of partners, lots of uh, people are invested in this and we're, we're very proud of, we're very, very proud of that. And that. We have a lot of local investors uh, in this, a lot of uh, foreign investors and um, uh, for us money is not um, it's the action you know like I think the action is very is very important um, we hope to build a lot of Zarias around the continent and this serves as a template so uh, no, I'm, I'm more focused I'm really more focused on um, what uh, governments what other countries um, what other people see sports as because sports is seen as a recreation in Africa instead of being seen as uh, a business uh, and competition uh, and sometimes we have to think about this in our minds you know because um, there's going to be a lot of job creation there's going to be a lot of um, youth movement uh, there's a lot of 
Um, there's going to be a lot of ability for us to grow uh, and for people to see how sports actually affects um, different parts of our lives, whether we're sports doctors, sports entertainment, entertainers, um, whether we're sport, in sports management like myself, we don't actually have to even play sports, you know, like to build sports. And in Africa, we have to think about, think about that. So I'm not necessarily focused on, you know, like what, uh, what it costs and how I'm going to recoup my, uh, my, my money. We are blessed, you know, like um, to have this opportunity and we really want to share you know, in the, in, uh, the African um, uh, community and, and in the African countries to show that we can really build uh, here and people can believe in sports as a business. Uh, the other question I have uh, for you, Masa, is you've had a lot of conversations uh, with African leaders and uh, as part of your, you know, your vision to promote sports development here in the continent. Uh, part of that you know, these conversations have resulted specifically in the building of arenas here in Rwanda, but also in Senegal. We don't see that happening a lot in other countries. Uh, first of all, let me ask you, what do you think makes Rwanda a great location for sports tourism? Uh, for us, it's, it's a leader, you know, uh, it's leadership, it's, it's, it's vision, uh, and President Kagame has vision. Uh, many years ago, he came to the All-Star Game and he saw uh, that arena and he wanted to come on um, and imitate that here. And um, his vision was how this grows into kind of what you're seeing developing here. And it's, it's that ecosystem, um, the stadium, um, what's built around it. Um, and he's always had that vision. And um, I think uh, the people he puts around him um, whether it's ministers, um, whether it's people in um, at their development board. Um, these people want to see progress in infrastructure, see progress in what they are doing. And um, hopefully um, this can translate to other countries around the continent. Mm. And, and, I mean, and I mean, broadly speaking, across the continent, uh, you personally, you've you know, voice your concerns around uh, why we don't see a lot of sports facilities across the continent. Uh, why don't we have a sports arena in Nigeria, in Kenya, in South, South Africa? And I want to understand from your own perspective, do you think this is a lack of understanding of the role that sports can play in the economic development of Africa? Or how do we change that mindset? It comes from leadership, you know, honestly, you know, like um, uh, that's what it does, you know, and um, usually leaders have people that, you know, um, think and strategize, advisors and sports is not paid attention to. And it's, um, it's one of the dumbest things I've seen, you know, because it continues to happen, you know, on the continent and we never pay attention to it. We never pay attention to um, how this can actually um, generate revenue uh, and be uh, something that creates jobs for the youth and for people in the country. Uh, you think about it in Accra, in Lagos, in, in Abidjan, um, Johannesburg, um, uh, there, there's no arenas. Um, there's no arenas and we have all these entertainers, we have all these uh, talent in sports. Um, we see the emergence of the Bar League and there's no, uh, there's no places to play. Everything comes here to Kigali uh, or goes to Dakar and now it's beginning to generate. But think about if we had a path um, where um, entertainers could travel and, and actually like entertain from arena to arena. Uh, think, uh, think about what that could generate. We have the entertainers. Yeah, like uh, Afro, mu Afro beats is, and Afro music is, is so big everywhere in the world, you know, and we in Africa are not taking advantage of it, of it and we are the originators of this. Mm. Uh, I mean, Masai, uh, let's be honest, you just talked about the, the fact that you, you don't care so much about, you're not so much concerned about money, but of course, uh, to boost this sports industry, you need to, you know, invest some significant amount of money. And I think NBA is doing that with, you know, NBA Africa, uh, the BAL is, I think, a proof of you know the, the 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 interest of investors to invest in sports here in Africa, and I think uh, this year I also saw uh, 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 you know the the 
the co-owner of uh, Milwaukee Bucks, uh, who sold his stake recently, saying that you know he's looking to invest some significant amount of money in sports here in Africa. I want to understand when you talk to investors, you know, uh, what sense do they have about what is going on here, and do they see? Uh, really interest to invest in sports, specifically basketball here on the continent? I think they see it, they see the potential. Um, the, the biggest thing behind all of this is talent. Yes, and there's talent on the continent. Everybody sees it. You see it in the 232 kids that we've brought here. You see it in um, Basketball Without Borders. You see it everywhere you go. You see it with entertainers. You see it in all fields. You know, like there's talent on the continent. So. Um, I think investors see that, they see what kind of resources we have in this country, in this continent, on this continent. Uh, so um, I don't think that's a problem. Yeah, there's no problem with people um, uh, coming here to invest. Uh, but when we come here to invest, uh, when people come here to invest, um, it's also, we want to see, we want to see investors from here too. Yeah, it's not necessarily people coming from uh, over there to invest. That's fine. Yeah, but like, what about us? How about us investing in ourselves? How about us investing in our own talent? Um, and um, sports is just put aside, you know, like, and I'm just trying to like make people understand that uh, sports is a business. People can make money. We have the talent, you know, like we have the people. Um, we have, we, and we actually have the resources. You look at, just think about it. Look at NC, the NCAA, um, which is, um, um, uh, collegiate sports in America and look at, look at how um, uh, they generate, you know, like just from whether it's small schools that play where they play or big schools or um, they, this, this thing is a big business and we have all these universities, we have all these athletes, yeah, why can't we think about it that way, you know, why does it always have to be um, Oh, we're trying to, uh, the doctors are important, the agriculturists are important, you know, the pharmacists are important, you know, but uh, let's pay attention to sports because um, it can also develop uh, a lot of people in many ways. It can develop business, it can de develop minds, it can develop our mentality, mental wellness, it brings peace, it makes people happy. Um, and if me as a businessman, if I'm thinking about it, it, it just brings business to us, you know, like and creates jobs for people. And I don't know why people don't get this. Lastly, I'll say we have to take care of our athletes too. Yeah, there's a lot of athletes we see from Africa playing for other countries. Why does that happen? You know, like it's because in their countries they lack the number one thing is facilities and organization. And it's because we're not paying attention to sports. Masai, thank you so much for speaking to CNBC Africa. Thank you. That was Masai Hujeli speaking to CNBC Africa uh, about sports development in Africa. Thank you so much. See you next time.